All right, Vimay, today is Friday. It is January 21st. Welcome to the Dog Walk presented by Barstool Sports. It's True Crime Friday again. Um, Allie, I do have to say I'm mad at myself that I forgot to bring up last episode, the new sweatshirt that you're wearing. My new merch? Yeah, your new merch. That my uh, my personal merch girl made for me? Yeah, so where did you get that from? AKA my sister. Can you, can you see it from there? Can per, you see per, my, can you see it? There you go. I hope so. Is my, probably, beard, is my beard oil not. in the way? Yeah. So I'll post a picture of it. The wood might be on there. Yeah, you got some new merch. It's a dog did. walk stuff. My sister made it. The back is really cool. Yeah, it's like a crop yeah. top. Which we should probably sell some women's crop tops for the girls. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that'd be a good idea. And we'll, you can put my face on them. I'll talk to them. Yeah, we'll talk to the <laughs> merch girls, Allison and Pilar. Um, I like that. It's uh, it's also a bootleg, so. Yeah. Um, I, we're gonna, One of a kind. Yeah, we'll possibly sue your sister. All right. And, well. uh <laughs> She can be our next episode. Yeah, exactly. We'll talk about what happened. That is bootleg. <laughs> um, this is very funny, though. No, it's actually very sick. And on the back, it says your name and whatnot. So. It does. That's sweet. Go buy some merch. It's in the Barstool store. Yeah. Um, you know what also is in the Barstool store, Allie? Is the, it beard oil? It's beard oil. Well, more than beard oil. It's the lovely product that's on both of our desks. If you're looking at my blackjack table here, if you're looking at Allie's little uh, TV dinner tray, <laughs> we have... Um, this new product here, it's called Wood. Um, it's a new men's grooming line that offers products across from hair, body, beard, and shave. Wood is for those who would, those who dare to try new things and always planning their next adventure. That sounds so like uh, a lot more serious than it has to be. I don't. I mean, I respect whoever uh, Barstool person came up with this, but it's interesting. Um, so yeah, wood works and smells as good as it looks. I haven't used it yet. I'm going to use it this weekend. I know Chiefs used it. He loved it. So I got to get on it. Also, I told you, you got to bring some beard oil for the BF. I will. Um, you got to see how he likes that. I will. And, uh, yeah, we're going to, um, we're going to check these products out. We'll be, they'll be all over the place here on Barstool. So go check that out. Mm -hmm. It's in the Barstool store. Um, I believe, or you could go to shop at, uh, shop wood at getwood.com. at G E T W O U L D.com or get at your local CVS. It's that <laughs> simple. Um, you can get your beard oil. So you're looking all nice and fresh to go to the new bar. There you go. I like that. Allie. Um, all right. So what's, uh, what's, what, what's going on today? All right. Today we are covering the ice box murders, which, um, are huge when they've come across the listener suggestions multiple times. This one's a really old one that's been happening back in uh, 65. So, oh, wow. you know, I know last week we did a pretty recent one. We're taking it back to the 60s. Uh, have you heard of this one? No, it's. I think I, you. I think you have. Have I? I, I maybe I. Have. I know there's one like ice pick. Excuse mm. me. Maybe I don't know. I don't know what I've heard and what I haven't. You might have. It, this one's. A, I would say a pretty well known one in the. Uh, true crime community but i i don't know i know i've heard this you know when i looked at it as like, oh yeah i've heard this one before and then I, when i was writing this i was like how have i not done this one already mm -hmm. um it's just it's so wild so like i said this happens uh, or took place back in 1965 june 23rd to be exact houston pd got a call for your just a routine wellness check um a nephew was worried about his aunt. He hasn't he hasn't heard from her in a long amount of time where he's like, hey, can you just go check up on him? They were an elderly couple, the aunt and the uncle, Fred, who was 81, and Edwina Rogers, who was 72. Um, again, their nephew called and was like, hey, hadn't heard from him. Can you just go check up on him? All right. Obviously, when police go and do a wellness check, nine, I don't know. I, I have never done a wellness check, but 90% of the time I would say, it's nothing, you know. This was not the case. Yeah, just a precaution type deal. <laughs> yeah. And then it's like, then, yeah. I mean, you never know what you're going to find on this, right? Like, no, no. You know, you get a call and say, oh, there's a car accident. You you know, you're going to a car accident. You get a wellness check, you're like, yeah, you walk into walk anything. Someone's binging <laughs> fucking orange is the new black. You yeah, know? Like, exactly. You know, know. Exactly. So police went out to the home. Um, they found that nobody was home. Nobody was answering the door. So they didn't really think too much of it. Again, we're in 65 here, so... Police were, honestly, they were, they were about to head out. And then one of the cops randomly decided that they were going to, um, they actually had seen that there was, it was a little weird. There was like a line of um, pots, like planter pots, if, if you will, in front of the back door. And they were like, that's kind of kind of strange. Let's, let's take a peek inside. So they did. They went inside. 
Again, nobody was home. They didn't really see a ton out of place. There definitely were things that were out of place, but nothing immediately screamed, we've got a problem here. So they were going to get ready to head out. And then one of the cops just like randomly decided they were going to take a peek into the fridge and or the icebox, if you will. Um, He found that the fridge, he opened the fridge and he's like, oh, it's full of meat. These people, you know, I don't know, I guess I don't know if this was a thing back in 65, but you know how you can like buy a cow? Yeah. You know, you can like pick the pieces of a cow that you want. You can buy a pig at Costco. I think okay. you can. I'm really? pretty sure. You so can you buy can, some and yeah, for like a pig roast. Yeah, and people will like stock their freezers and they'll be stocked all winter, right? Yeah, I mean, White Sox Day, they just kill the deer. Exactly. Right? They, you know, they've been Exactly. Meat. Yeah. Hunters, yeah. So their fridge was full of meat. So again, it's not going to scream like, oh, we have a problem here. But, yeah. but. I already know where this is going. But, <laughs> I bet but, you yeah. do. So the Rogers did not just buy a bunch of meat. Um, the Rogers were the meat if you will. Yeah. Now, the Rogers, uh, or so the police, again, they, they open it, okay, a bunch of meats in here, whatever. They were about to leave and then um, they opened like the vegetable drawer at the bottom of the refrigerator and there were their heads right there. So then they were like, oh, this, this is fucked up. Yeah. This is, yeah, this just went from zero to 100. Yeah. I'm pretty sure this is not meat. It like I said, it w- it was the Rogers who had been dismembered, packed up, put in the ice box. Now, Edwina's head had a bullet through it, so right there, that's how she died. She got shot in the head, and it was like execution style bullet, so that, that's personal. Fred had been bludgeoned with a hammer, and his eyes were violently removed. So this is a gruesome. Jesus scene to come upon right now clearly just killing the couple was not enough i mean a shot to the head execution style bludgeoning somebody with a hammer and removing their eyes clearly was not enough for this killer he dismembered them drained them of their blood packed uh, you know butchered them up packed them up put them in the ice box i mean this is overkill to the nth degree Mm -hmm. now the killer also removed fred's genitals and his intestines and flushed him down the toilet before he went off and went off and ran away um his insides were later found in a nearby sewer and they had been cut chopped up into a bunch of little pieces and flushed down the toilet horrifying now it was concluded that Fred and Edwina had been in the icebox for up to a week at before that they before they were discovered. And so, I mean, clearly this was a thought out plan because you, you think of even just the smell of a decaying body. Well, he put them in the, the icebox. So that's not going to happen. Right. Mm-hmm. So they, they could have been there for up to a week before the police found them. Um, one person who was missing from this whole scenario that police have now stumbled upon is Roger and Edwina's son, who was 43 years old, Charles Roger, who also lived with them at that time. He lived with them in the same house. Now, police had found a trail of essentially just kind of like poorly cleaned up blood leading to Charles's bedroom door as well as there was blood on the keyhole portion of his door. So this is what I say where like, yeah, there were definitely clues that were left, but nothing that they saw immediately. There was, they, I mean. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're showing up to a uh, wellness check. They right. Have a, they're not a looking. blind eye. They're not like inspecting every inch. So Exactly. Yeah, You're yeah, not yeah. looking at keyholes on yeah. doors. Um, so there was blood like on his door and they couldn't find Charles. And he kind of so turned into essentially the number one suspect right off the bat. He's nowhere to be found and there's blood on his door. And he lives with the two people who are just brutally murdered, butchered, and shoved into an icebox. Now, again, I will say like when police showed up to do this wellness check, there was no 
sign of forced entrance. So very likely that it was somebody who either had access to the house, knew how to get into the house, what have you. Police also found what to be, what was believed to be the murder weapons, including the claw hammer. Like I said, Fred was bludgeoned with a hammer. Um, Scissors. Um, You can infer yourself what that was used for based off of what Fred had removed from him. And a keyhole saw. This, they were dismembered. So right right there you've got, you know, kind of laid out for you what, what they believe to be the murder weapons. Now, Charles himself was a very interesting man. He was a veteran of the Navy. He fought in World War II. He had a degree in nuclear phys- physics. So, I mean, he was no bag of rocks. He was a smart dude If you, to get a degree in nuclear physics. I mean... That takes some brains, right? Yeah, not everybody's doing that. No, but unfortunately, here's kind of the plot twist here is, unfortunately for the majority of his childhood, and I I should say the majority of his life, Charles had been manipulated and abused by his parents, Fred and Edwina. So they're coming into this looking like, oh, this innocent elderly couple. Well, not that this warrants them, you know, what happened to them, but... It's starting to become more clear that they they weren't, you know, the most upstanding people themselves. For, like, he, uh, let's see, so, again, he was manipulated, he was abused. Um, while he was living with them, he was, they did not, they didn't have the greatest of relationships, they did not hang out like Charles would leave at the crack of dawn. He would come back after dark, he would not see them. Um, he would go straight to his room and he would actually communicate with his parents by sliding a note under their door. So this was not like, let's sit down and have a, a TV dinner kind of thing. Uh, forensic accountants actually pieced together that Fred and Edwina had taken out multiple loans in Charles's name and they drained his savings account basically. So this is what I mean. They, they were manipulating him. They were used to taking all of his money Um, the house that they lived in was actually technically Charles's as well. Um, Fred and and Edwina just basically made Charles's life hell for him. And if you ask me, that's a pretty strong motive, right? This is something he's been dealing, he's 43 years old, something he's dealing with his whole life. Obviously we've got finances involved in this now, um, abuse and manipulation and Charles is nowhere to be found not looking great for Charles. Yeah, not not the hardest investigation for police. Right. Now, like I said, Charles spent little to no time, even though he lived there, he spent little to no time actually in the home. He kind of tried to avoid his parents at all costs. Um, he, Being that he was the prime suspect, though, and he was nowhere to be found, this like nationwide manhunt ensued for him, and everybody was trying to track him down. Again, we had to put, you know, into our retrospect here, this was in 65. They did not have the technology that they we do today. Um, a manhunt then was very different than a manhunt now. All those kinds of things. But they did have a ton to work on. All the, you know, alleged murder weapons were left behind. The bodies were clearly left behind. It was not entirely, the scene was not entirely cleaned up. It was right in the family home. I mean... They had a lot to work off of, right? For a case that happened in 65, they had everything they could ask for yeah. besides the suspect or the number one suspect, I should say. Um, the search, this man nationwide manhunt, just like also came up dry with no charges. They couldn't track him down. Um, forensic accountants also believed that they traced his movements um, having to indicating that he actually fled to Mexico picked up another job while he was down there um, and he was trying to make his way down to South America but he was also declared dead in 1975 so 10 years later because um, there was just some indications that forensic accountants and whatever it may be word along the way that he was killed along the way so after having been missing for 10 years um, if I'm not mistaken I'm almost positive that somebody can legally be declared dead after four years of being missing oh really i'm 99 sure on that um 
at least with like I think for insurance purposes and stuff as far as like producing a death certificate or, or getting a life insurance whatever it may be I'm almost positive it's four years but he had been gone for 10 years at this point so he was declared dead in 1975 um this case actually remains unsolved to this day damn I thought I was getting ready for be like here here's how we found this guy and no here's why he did it here's how he did it holy shit this guy committed like this brutally vicious murder and he was never to be seen again no nope. I mean again it happened in 65 so yeah hard a lot harder to yeah, track somebody yeah, down yeah for sure but holy shit but no it technically it still remains unsolved to this day I mean we can we can infer pretty much what's going on here besides like um the confirmation of a motive um but now that Charles, I mean, again, he's declared dead because it was indicated that he was killed along the way, mm-hmm. um, you know, making his way down to South America. But, you know, I guess technically we don't know that for sure. Yeah. I mean, if he was, I'm not good at math. If he was 43 then, how old would he be now? Like 80 something? Old, 90? Yeah, uh, really old. old. So even if we did find him now, like we might get some answers, but yeah, it's most most likely he's dead at this point. Now, um, a few other things to note that authorities at the scene did handle the murder weapons and other items, like other uh, other evidence and other items without gloves. Again, we're in 1965. It was actually, um, it was regulated that they should have been wearing gloves at this point, but they didn't. They weren't. Um, it was actually... Funny enough, it was the whole like wearing gloves things was put into place to protect the authorities as far as like catching diseases or whatever versus like destroying evidence. Because again, they just, they just didn't have the technology back then to even know that you could test evidence and what all you could do with it and what might be tampered with and whatever. Um, but long story short, they were not wearing gloves when they were handling the scene. So even if we did still have that stuff, if it were ever brought to case, you know, brought to court in this day and age, like that evidence is all technically tampered with, it's all contaminated, we wouldn't really be able to do a ton with it because it was handled imp- improperly. Mm-hmm. Now, um, aside from abuse, others also, as far as abuse being the motive behind these murders, if if it was Charles. Um, you can go, and this is something you can go down. I chose not to go down the rabbit hole with this one because I don't personally don't think that it's related. But um, there is a lot of conspiracies out there that Charles was actually involved in the assassination of JFK. Really? Yep. Funny you say that because I googled this obviously while we were talking and there was a picture of jfk i was like oh what's this did he yeah like make like a charge to uh try to solve this did he uh, so, have a related relation somehow that's crazy yeah you can read into it again he was in the navy um so he had some military ties some government ties what have you um you know it was said that he knew somebody or was involved with somebody who was allegedly part of the assassination um it was said that he was maybe there that day or whatever like you can go like i said you can go down the rabbit hole with this conspiracy um personally i think it's a little bit far-fetched but i guess not completely out of the question um between jfk and abuse i think abuse is probably a more likely motive but the whole thing with the jfk motive is that he um, Fred and Edwina, his parents, found out about it by either, um, it was said, like, somehow found out about it. Let's just say there's a lot of ways people say that whether they read his journal or they figured it out somehow. And they, since they knew about it, for, uh, Charles was like, whoop, got to get rid of you guys. To me, I mean, again, if you if you want to go through that conspiracy, you can absolutely do so. To me, though, when you look at the crime scene, it doesn't really add up because if that were the case, right, if he was like, oh, shoot, they found out that I was involved in the assassination. Now I got to get rid of them. Okay, then shoot them both and be done with it, right? Like this was a very brutal murder. He shot Edwina. He bludgeoned 
Fred um, took out his eyes, chopped off his genitals, cut up his intestines, put it down the toilet, dismembered the bodies, drained him of the blood, put him in, you know, packed him up, put him in the ice box. I mean, that is all very, 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 very personal for just finding out that you're involved in these. I mean, I know that like the assassination of a president is a huge thing. Oh yeah, but that's still, it's a personal yeah. kill. Like the just the way that they were killed was super personal so to me abuse a lifetime of abuse seems like a better fits more yeah fits more um but i just thought that was very interesting that that was also like a whole other you know can of worms that you could unpack yeah i'm reading that now it looks like there's a 1992 book called the man in the grassy knoll according to his work rogers was a cia agent Mm -hmm. who was uh, uh postulated to have impersonated lee harvey oswald in Mexico City, um, and along with Charles Harrelson, was one of the two shooters involved in the assassination. Mm-hmm. Huh, I'll have to ask Chief about this. Yeah. You know, Chief is, like, obsessed with JFK. Yeah. He so like he needs knows. to go down the rabbit hole with that one. Yeah, maybe he, he knows more on it. Yeah, he might. Maybe he brought this up, too. We've done so many episodes on JFK. Maybe. That, like, I, you know, there's just so much to talk about. I wonder what he'd say. Yeah. I'll have to ask, because he's... he's the number one guy in the JFK beat, that's for sure. Yeah. I also, so, I also speaking on this, that that's the end, right? That's the end. Um, did you see kind of in the same vein? This reminded me of it. Uh, the FBI removed Robert Fisher from the top ten wanted list. Really? Yes. No way. Mm-hmm. Recently? Uh, in November. Really? Yes. Why? Because they needed to put somebody else up there or they just they, like think it's a lost cause? So they say one of the criteria for placement on the FBI's 10 most wanted list is need for publicity to help locate oh. and capture the subject. Because of the extensive publicity Fisher's case received during its nearly 20 years in the list, it has not resulted in a successful location or capture. The case no longer fulfills their requirement. Wow. Yeah. <gasps> that was like one of my favorite cases we ever did. I still think he's alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too. Like, that's like one of the most fascinating to me as well. And it says, wow. the FBI has added, it is the continued danger a fugitive presents to the community if not apprehended. There is no evidence that Fisher has engaged in any additional illegal activity since his originally alleged crime. Interesting. I know, right? I agree with you. That's wow. like something I'm, I've, I've been so, that case is nuts. I don't know when we did that, but. We did that one a long yeah. time ago. Did we? Maybe the summer? Uh, let me look up. Um, yeah. God, I don't even know. I just Googled quick. Um, it looks like, oh, wow, January of 2021. So, so we did that a like year ago. Over, yeah, or a year almost ago. Almost a year ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just exactly wow. a year ago. Um, check that out. That's I mean, that crazy. Was, I know that was nuts. That was that's one of those ones that I, like I said, when we talked about. It, I was like, still think about it, and it's mm-hmm. like, wow, this is like such a crazy case. Wow, yeah. and now he's removed. He's Shoot. off. He's off. He's not their list. I he's know. well. I think he's still alive, but he's clearly uh, flying under the radar. Oh, yeah, enough. For I them mean, to only be because, like, because he hey, like there was that big, big, um, not national park. What am I thinking of? In Arizona, the cave? No. Um, where where government can't go. Not not um, indigenous land. Oh. You know what I'm talking okay, about? There okay. was that yeah, big, yeah, yeah, big, yeah. big, big forest or whatever right yeah. next to where he allegedly disappeared. I'm like, well, gold mine for somebody who's on the run from the yeah. government. No, you're right. A giant area where the government can't go. You're right. <clears throat> so yeah i had to add that note wow. there after hearing that he was proclaimed dead rogers was so i was like huh oh yeah reminds me about our yeah. guy robert fisher not our guy but you know shoot right, so he's not proclaimed dead though i didn't see that they just said they took him off you know because he's still fairly young like he's yeah eating, he what, he'd could be like still in the be 60s or so yeah maybe i Ish. think it makes sense something I mean, like that Crazy. I, they got to catch that fucking guy if he is still alive. That guy Seriously. the worst. Oh, that was one of my favorite ones. I yeah. mean, favorite. He was As loosely. Like it was a terrible, intri- terrible intrigued. story. Yeah, like yeah, most. Uh, most intriguing. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. Maybe the, uh, um, the like, declaring somebody dead, I think it's more so insurance. Like, if, if you, whatever, say your husband disappears after four years, you can declare him dead and, like, get his life insurance. Oh, okay. Kind of thing. That makes sense. 
Um, what have you? All right, then, Allie. That's it. Crazy. Crazy. All right. All right, everybody. Thank you for listening. That's it for today's True Crime Friday. We'll be back on Monday. We will see you all then.